<laughs> Welcome to another week where I'm back with you. Welcome to another edition and another show of 21st Century Rocker Mom. It's nice to be back with you after a week of just, you know, some time off. I'm, but, but I'm back. You're back. I want to just first start off saying, what are you thankful for? What are you thankful for? It's like some little like song that the kids are like learning in school. But it's Thanksgiver. It's Thanksgiving weekend in Canada, which for most people just means like eating turkey and falling over. I will be eating like tofurkey and falling over, but I'm also, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for a lot of you showing up in the live stream that I did last week and for checking that out. And I had fun. I had a lot of fun. So I think a lot of you did too. So uh, I know someone who had a really good time at the live stream who was helping me highlight some comments and help me figure out how to do this live stream stuff because it's all brand new to me and I'm a little bit Polish and I'm a little bit rock and roll. I'm a little bit Polish. The incomparable Rob McGallum. Hi. Hi. I had fun with your live stream. Did you? I was like the silent voyeur in the room. Ooh. Nobody knew I was there. But there I was watching you do your thing. And it was really cool to see everybody chime in and, and jump on and, you know, partake and participate with you and, and watch you cross another milestone off of the evolution of what you're doing with your podcast. You had been talking about doing a live stream for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just chats about it and I was like yeah we'll do live stream no I'm not gonna do live stream yeah I'll do live stream when am I do, when am I gonna do live stream how late am I gonna do it I gotta make sure the kids are sleeping but you did it it turned out really good and I had a great time I love hanging out with everybody and I love uh not like just answering questions because I love answering questions because that's fun but like hearing other people's comments and you know ideas the people are throwing out about, you know, I like this horror movie or I like that. Or have you seen this? Or have you seen that? And it's nice because it's in real time. And you can kind of talk to each other back and forth. It's really nice. And it's wonderful to kind of be able to engage. I feel like it's nice and it's cool. And it's a chill sort of chemistry. So I guess I want to keep it up. I kind of want to. I just want to keep it up. I just want this feeling to last. Well, you are the master of your domain. I thought you were going to say I was the master of my universe or something like that. <laughs> you are the most powerful podcaster in the universe uh so you get to decide what you do with your show whether you want to do these uh ones that you record on your own and we release later or whether you want to do live streams or whether you want to have guests you get to decide well that's the whole fun part about it i'm just going to do all of them all those things sure. that's the whole fun part about I it. i really liked watching you do the live stream because it was unpredictable that's what I like about live streams too, because I mean, anything can happen. Anyone, anyone can ask you anything. And I mean, when I say ask me anything, it was, the, I mean, it was just a regular live. <laughs> and usually it's kind of ask me anything. I'm pretty open. I just like how you went down the rabbit hole a little bit with some of the questions and they took you in, in different, uh, you know, adventures and paths that you didn't necessarily, necessarily plan because you'd come to me before and said, you know, I, I don't know what to do. I'm like, well, just, you know, figure out a show outline and people are going to chime in and they're going to ask some really cool questions. And it was fun to see you have that conversation on the fly with people. And now a lot of people know what soaking is. They know what soaking is like, and, and jump humping. Jump humping. They can say like, how many times did you get soaked this week, Linda? Like, they well, can it's say a, that It's the two other. part thing, right? The soak is the insertion. Yes. Yeah, so and then the, the friction comes from the third party jumping Jumper, on the mattress exactly. to but jump. You, I mean, if you want to be a real like virgin about it, you can just soak and like not move. And like, yeah. but you're probably like the most popular <laughs> girl in your church. It's like levels of virginity, like the true virgin, you just soak. But what if they're like a Like major... a dirty virgin is like the one who does the jump pumping. Yeah, she's horrible. But like the soaker, like what if she's just like soaking more guys? And the jump humpers maybe had like two or three jump humps. How, how many people have you <laughs> soaked? Oh my God. How many people have you soaked this it's, week, Linda? If you don't know what we're talking about, go back and check out the previous episode, the <laughs> live stream that Tanya's talking about. She mm -hmm. talks about this thing where she found this meme with these two ladies that look like the Wayne's brother from White, white Chicks. Total and, and White they, Chicks vibes. And they talk the about brothers. soaking. And Tanya goes in depth on it, answers questions and comments. 
you have to check it out. It it's horrifying. It's amazing, but funny, but very, but it's like, and it's like this is just like another like game. It's how do you do this without doing this? Tell me you're you're a virgin. Or like tell me you're gonna have sex with me without actually having sex with me. Weird, but it's actually sex. Like. What is wrong with you people? Like, what is? No, it's not. It's soaking. What is rum bringing with you people? Like, it's just, it's something. And, but speaking of games, thanks for having me back. By the way, mm, well, that's a game. That's always a gamble in itself. I I don't know. I never get really a heads up when I'm coming back. I sometimes throw it out and say, "Hey, it'd be nice to maybe uh, chat with you on your podcast." But it's your show, and I don't want to push. It's the always agenda. nice to, ch- to chat with you because we I mean, we can chat about. There are too many. I love being about. on your show. Can I just say that? It's hilarious. Why is that funny? I'm not saying it's funny. I'm saying you're it's hilarious. laughing. You're I'm not. Okay, why is that hilarious? I love being it's, on your show. It's cute. It's cute. It's cute because I think it's cute. I look forward to it. I say Bob Vila rocks. Woo! A most extreme elimination challenge. That is another game show stream that I used to watch when I was young. Okay. So you game playing. And I, I think I've only caught one episode. Oh my god! I was like on the clip. Superstation, and they were like Spike or Super. Oh yeah, Spike. Spike yeah. TV. Spike TV. Yeah. And it was like badly overdubbed. I remember something about riding a log down a hill. Yeah, but like, like only a log down a hill on mud, and like it being like really crazy. So it was like a, a show, and people would do things. I don't know if it was filmed in China or Japan or it's, Korea. I think most extreme elimination challenge is still going it's still a thing oh yeah yeah yeah. they keep doing they, they do things like they they slice their toes with razor blades and then go swimming in the water with sharks and they give them the money if they can do it it's like the contestants do some crazy shit so we heard about this thing called the squid game and i'm like yeah you were like skeptical and i'm like oh you got to check out squid game and then well and then when i thought about it i was like oh okay like i was like this is going to be like most extreme elimination challenge it's going to just be like it's like badly dubbed korean show where everyone's gonna be like bob Vila rocks and it's just gonna be like class action park like the like, class action park i think you described it as because it's a korean production it's a korean production and i'm like is it gonna be like a badly dubbed like like the class action class park, action park which meets, is a documentary that we talked about before on your show yeah where like those people go to that that slide water park and it's just fucking in, out of control in jersey, like, everyone's like yeah. dying in jersey where the like, safety regulations are not so much uh, intact. Where everybody goes to die on the slide. It is like a rite of passage for mm-hmm. teenagers to like, like survive it. I I assume this show was going to be an ex- a challenge of like this, like most extreme elimination challenge and the class action park. And then maybe a little, little like Kenny versus Spenny or something. So you thought this was like a like a reality TV show thing, like an actual game show, like Squid Game, like Wheel of Fish in like UHF <laughs> for fuck's sakes. Red Snapper, Ooh. hello Weaver, very tasty. Like like that's what very I, tasty. Like, that's what I was getting. My, thought I was getting myself into. I thought it was more like Hunger Games. Oh, did you? So yeah. that's so it's Squid Game. Obviously, is in it's it's a, it's on Netflix. Like it's the biggest light, show out in the world. Green light. Like, fucking, I remember playing Red Light, Green Light when I was a kid. Do you want to give a, a synopsis of kind of what it is? Or well, kind I don't of, want to give too much away. It doesn't disappoint. I'll say it's a little bit of a slow burn at the start. But by the end of the first episode, you're going to be on the floor. Like, you're going to be on the floor and be like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. It's visceral. It's violent. Visually, it's breathtaking. So the set production and the set design is like big props. Like how they pull that off from yeah. you, like from a filmmaker's point of view, like, what do you say? It's really cool because it's one of the first programs I've seen where they've really concentrated an effort on the 3D uh, space, not like 3D movies, but like when, when you're presented a set, it's not just, you know, the walls that you see kind of on eye level, you see the floor and the ceiling in almost every space that they showcase. And it becomes overwhelming in this huge, encapsulating way with all these people that are in so these scenarios lateral. like it's just gigantic and they play with proportions like there's this one room with like playground equipment that's really ornate and like overscaled and yet warped and it's not quite in tune and the way they film it with lenses kind of just again distorts and warps and like, it. The, like the dsat that they use and and then like editing yeah, techniques yeah that they use and the choices that they've made and the Escher like transition spaces with all the stairs that are like in different primary colors and in tints that lead the players from one spot to it. 
again, we haven't really done a good job setting it up, and I blame myself for jumping ahead here, but it's a group of people have a chance to play a game. A group of very desperate, like desperate a, Almost people. like a black market game show that nobody knows about. They've been selected for one reason or another. I don't want to give too much away. Most of them because it's their like, last-ditch effort. And the, the stakes are life or death to yes. play s s that six game. childhood like games and that's all we can we'll kind of say you mentioned the first game is red light green light red light green light and you know where you start at one end of the the field someone says green light mm -hmm. and you go as far as you can and then red light you stop stop and if you're caught moving then you're eliminated so it's that mm -hmm. kind of stuff and that's the kind of thing eliminated that could be anything but i mean the film the, the the show itself is really pleasing to the eyeballs it's extremely extremely violent so like 150 percent not for kids. No. Very nostalgic with childhood games, but creepily nostalgic. Um, Why do you like it? Because it's nostalgic because of like childhood games, but in that like creepy way, like on the edge of your seat, because like now it's like if you don't finish this game, when you're a kid, it's like if you don't finish this game, you don't finish it. Like I Wait. remember games like, oh God, we had a game called British Bulldog when we were kids and we had a girl in our school who broke her fucking neck. I am not going to say her name. We also call it Red Rover sometimes. Red too. Rover, Red Rover. And we call like, Tanya over. Oh, we call, they called me over. I was cool. Was petite lady. And you run. It, basically, <clears throat> you have a line of people that hold chain. arms yeah, they together. Arms. As hard as and, they can. And when they call you, your goal is to break through people holding hands. Yeah, break through the chain of the people that's yeah. holding hands. Like, try to get through. And I mean, they always catch me in their little spider web because I'm a little shit and whatever. But sometimes I run like through them or underneath them or whatever. So <clears throat> one time we're playing and on one side of the, and we're in, I'm in grade school at this point and it's like grade one or two young. We had a principal who was like the fucking trunchbull from Matilda, from Matilda. She was like, and I'm not kidding, not because I was a little kid, because when my dad went to meet her at meet, meet the teacher night, my dad's about five foot five five foot six she like towered over him by many feet she was like seven feet fucking tall she was bigger than our vice principal who was like a man who was also a tall man she was just huge and she was british and she was like i do not appreciate the game british bulldog being played on the i'm yard. just picturing like a tall bob hoskins and she had like she was like a tall b arthur for fuck's sakes <laughs> No, okay, stop it with B. Arthur. Okay, no more B. Or no, no more, more B, baseball B. Arthur or Bush. On well, that's another. <laughs> Are you gonna talk about that? We will later. We'll talk about the Golden Girls later. Okay. But Miss Squid Game. This Miss, call her Miss T. She, she stopped us from playing British Bulldog. She didn't want us to play. And one day the kids got riled up and wanted to fucking play it anyway. So they did. I did not participate, but I was there to see. And Red Rover, Red Rover, let so-and-so come over. And they whipped this one girl over so hard. And they didn't want to let her through the fence. And this girl who was in my class, she'd been held back. She was, in, she was in grade one, but she was supposed to be in grade two. But I think she'd been held back one or two times. She was a shit disturber. So you're saying this is a bit of karma. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I'm not saying this is karma at all. It's horrible. Liability on the school. But it's like she, she was just a, a little fucker. And everyone, I think the people that played with her, like, wanted to pay her back. Oh. So, oh, my God, kids can be assholes. And they, Red Rover, Red Rover, let this bitch come over. And they let her come over. And they flung her up. And she fucking went up. And she went down. And she broke her fucking ass neck and her arm. Like, right at the top of the neck. And, oh, my God. There was, like, blood everywhere. And she didn't come back to school for, like, the longest time. And, like... And then, like, the next day, there's, like, the announcement, like, on the PA system was, like, there will be no more playing of the game British Bulldog. And it was, like, the trunch, and she was saying it. Mm, like, she was, like, listen, like, never again at this school. It's banned. Fucking, it's over. I wonder what the legal implications are of something like that. Like, what do Holy you do? Fuck. Like, as a school, you got to be freaking out. Like, where was the yard duty teacher? How did this... How, how, why was this allowed up to this point? Somebody can only can get hurt. was the yard duty teacher? Like, how the fuck did they not see a million kids swinging each other like a net? Like, I, a, I like feel a like, chain formation. I feel like it's almost akin to when there's, like, a serious fight in hockey or something like that that borders on, like, it's somebody, like, like dying. Di which has really happened once or twice in hockey. Pulp be out of them, yeah. You know, and it's like, well, you know, it's part of the game. It's part of the atmosphere <laughs> and the environment. It's like, uh, not that much it isn't. 
Dude, I feel like my life is like the Squid Game because we have been up since four o'clock this morning. It's It's been a challenge. Because our youngest this week has been a bit of a challenge. Like even on Tuesday, I was like, <clears throat> this is a long fucking week. Like, <laughs> is because it Friday yet? Tuesday was like a day that like was a day that we did some because she she's not potty still like training because she knows how to go to the bathroom completely all by herself and when she needs to go it's like you better get the fuck out of the way now because she needs to go and you don't want to discourage any potty training or like make them like regress in their training to go to the washroom so she got up at four <laughs> o'clock in the morning this this <laughs> week like today because she had to go poo she's like i gotta go poo i'm like what it's like four o'clock in the morning and I'm like, she walks into our room. I'm just like, what's up? She's like, I mean, do you have a bad dream? No, I got to pee. I'm like, okay, let's go to the bathroom. I'm half asleep. <clears throat> go check our eldest, check his blood sugar and everything's smooth sailing. <clears throat> she's peeing. Cool. Go back to bed. And she's like kissing me on my face. I'm like, why aren't you asleep? You're in mommy and daddy's bed for a bit. Like go to sleep. <clears throat> I got to poo. She says, I'm like, what? You had a poo right now. It's four o'clock in the morning. I'm like, well, I mean, there's never a wrong Which is a kind of head of schedule for her, for totally. everybody that doesn't know. I mean, if you got a poo, you got a poo, right? But she got some smart sweets, which have like a lot of chicory root inland and fiber in them. And fiber can only do one of two things. Make it go or make you hold it in and all go at the same time. Yeah. And it was the log driver's waltz from four o'clock in the morning until when? Oh, well, for the rest of the day. But like for a good... 90 minutes she just wanted to go have poops yeah pretty much we we watched all of the mm -hmm. the muppet movie with jason siegel <laughs> and it was like everything every every 10 minutes everything is grand i yeah. got a big fat poop in the palm of my hand life's a happy song when someone's by your side to poop along no kidding and then like she just... i just love how like our kids both like i gotta pee i gotta poop and it's like off to the races it's like it's like stop the presses I gotta poop. And it's like a, a mad like a, dash to the closest a, toilet. They make an announcement. It's like a fanfare of farts. It's and like then they the, have to announce. The, <laughs> the crisis that ensues when the when the bathroom they head for is like occupied. Or when they go together. Oh, it's like, oh, what do I do? Oh, I didn't account for this scenario. I'm like, oh my God, there's two bathrooms. When do you go downstairs? Uh, it's like, who's going to go? It's a, it's a conundrum. It's like, what happened? I mean, there was tandem pooping this week. I was on the toilet going poo, which is like something I never do alone unless like it's our eldest leaves That's me alone. That's a parent thing. Our, no, but our eldest doesn't come into the bathroom when we're pooping. He just doesn't. He's almost seven years old. But our youngest, oh my God, no shame. Bathroom door, it doesn't matter if it's closed. It doesn't matter if it's locked. She's getting oh. in. <clears throat> doesn't She's matter. so funny because she'll sit there when the door is locked if she doesn't like escort you to the bowl. Yep. She'll just sit there and, and knock say, hello. What are you doing in there? What are you doing in there? I'm pooping. What are you doing? Are you done? No. Nope. You're done. You're done pooping. I'm like, you're making the poop go back in my... So I list, I'd let her come into the bathroom with me. And she walked in. I just started pooping. And I was like, okay, this is going to be... A, I'll be here for a minute. This is, is going to be a great one. And I was excited for <laughs> it. was going to be a great one. I was excited for this poop, okay? It was a Hallmark event. I felt... But I feel like a Hallmark Christmas movie. I felt like... A little bit of tinsel coming out. And it was just like a beautiful snow scene with poo and then she all of a sudden she's just like i gotta poo i'm like what do i do i don't want to swing her butt over the bathtub and make her poo in the bathtub and That's you're horrible. pinching logs well i wasn't even pinching them at that point i just shuffled my butt back further to the toilet and i let her tandem poop with me which is a tandem shit and she shat in the front and i shat in the back and nothing crossed swords or streams and everything was great everybody got oh my god wiped that bowl up. must have been so full oh it was full of shit Jesus. Big time, big time. We had a fucking kinetic sand disaster this week. Like, it has been a disaster this week. It's been hysterical because, like, it's been raining a lot. So you do anything to keep the kids occupied. So our youngest was, like, making kinetic sand with my waffle maker. So I got my waffle maker out <laughs> one morning to make <laughs> waffles for the kids, <clears throat> not realizing that she left it full of fucking kinetic sand. And it's, like, scented. Like, yeah, it's like strawberry cinnamon scenty because it was a part of like an ice cream kinetic sand set. It smells like million vanilla. So like this weird like McDonald's mm -hmm. vanilla powdered 
shake smell and chocolate smell and strawberry smell. Remember those vanilla? Remember yeah, the, the ice cream? The, the powdered the shakes. The milkshakes from McDonald's. Before mm -hmm. they switched them, like... Late 80s, early 90s. Like real shakes. I remember those shakes. The real Well, they're, they're real now. But yeah. before they were powdered. Yeah, the powdered, real powder. Like triple thick powder Weird, shakes. like not ice cream, but like mm. ice drink. Yeah, it was iced milk or something. something. I don't know. It was good. It's nothing but I That's now. what it smells like to me. It did. But it was like, I forgot you put it in the mini waffle maker. I plug it in. All of a sudden, I'm like, it smells weird. And I'm like, Whoa! Oh my god kinetic sand like like no one's awake i'm like fucking losing my mind so i'm just like putting it back together being like fuck no one can know about this what i what i think is really funny about this and it's all coalescing and coming back full circle i'm realizing that like our entire week as parents is essentially a microcosm of squid game pretty much like then like the the, the trials mm -hmm. and tribulations we have to overcome are pretty much akin to what we see on that show so far mm -hmm. Okay, yep, then I give you exhibit next. Um, the stink bug incident. <laughs> stink bugs, because we live near a pond. And they're abundant in our backyard. They like to get them in the backyard and they can land on the window once in a while. And once in a blue moon, they get in the house. They're harmless, but they're hideous and they look horrifying. The kids aren't afraid of them. Like our eldest is like, they're stupid. They're not going to do anything to me. Like he's like, mom, I don't buy it. I don't understand why you're afraid of them. I'm like, because they make my skin crawl. Cause they're, they're weird looking, looking, man. They're, they're like the size of like an like adult thumb male's pad. thumbnail. Like yeah. A thumbnail. But like the, the shape of their shell is like a shield. It's an armor shield. And it's hard. It's like kind of like hickory nut hard. It's hard as fuck. Like it's like you try to get rid of them and like you don't want to squish them because they smell because they emit that smell. But the other night, I'm laying down with our eldest, and he's already having a hard time going to sleep because he had a shitty night. It was like Wednesday. It was Wednesday night because he had that really bad day. Yeah. And he had a shit day on Wednesday, and <clears throat> he was just having the hardest time sleeping. I finally get him to sleep. Also, we hear what is that? So I jump up on his bed like Excalibur with a fucking sword, not a real sword, a foam sword. They're like a play sword. It looks like a play sword. And he's killing himself laughing at me. Got the lay on. He's like, there's the stink bug. There's the stink bug. And I'm whacking it down, trying to get it and smush it. I can't find it. So I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to go to sleep. But I also don't want to tell him that I want to go to sleep. It's one of those parenting decisions that you've got to make. Yeah. To make, you, you got to make the call. Do I make the overall situation better and let my own paranoia go? Exactly. In the and moment. make this better for the child. Or do I yeah. just like, who do I put first? Yeah. So, I like kept it calm as a cucumber inside. I was like dying. I was like, oh, fuck this stink bug. Oh my God, it's so disgusting. I don't want to go to sleep. I'm like, but he's not afraid of it. So yeah. I don't want to give him a reason to be afraid of it, right? So I was just like, oh, well, whatever. And, I'm like, yeah. we stunned the crap out of it. We'll find him tomorrow. He giggled himself to sleep so fucking hard. He was like laughing in his sleep. I just and it's not like it's a, a black widow that you can find or no. or even a mosquito like these things are harmless and they like hide and run away and yeah and then they go back outside and act yeah. like little jerks and whatever and they come to the window when you're cooking things that smell good I made bacon or I, just, I just I, I wasn't there because mm -hmm. you were like you're saying you're putting uh, our eldest down and I'm just picturing you like Errol Flynn I was like, like Errol Flynn jumping from like platform mm -hmm. to platform like dueling the stink bug you know what? Maybe that's when I effed up my back. Plus the what I did in the laundry. Doing some kind of the twist, kind of fucking the shake move, the twist, the hump, the chump, the bump. I don't know what I was doing. The, the horizontal cha-cha? The horizontal mambo. No, what this this time it was actually not a sexual injury that mm, effed up my back. Mambo number five. It wasn't mambo number five. It wasn't the Macarena. Ha. Huh. <clears throat> sexual Macarena. Yes, yes, yes. Anybody macarena. that wants to hear me super embarrassed hey, again hey, go back macarena, to the back catalog macarena. listen to tanya's two episodes two episodes that i guessed it on with her were all we do is talk about sex and embarrass me and embarrassment and sex you and I, I think that's why you like having me on because you sex like to be able to embarrass me you have embarrassing notes in there i i bet already no i don't you know it is embarrassing the fact that i ordered promised cheetah like leopard pants and the fact that when they came they were fucking giraffe pants i posted about it on my instagram the other day you saw them and like a few people were like yeah those are pretty giraffe like i'm like yep yeah, well i thought they'd make me look taller <gasps> mom mm. joke terrible like <laughs> i don't want to grow up i'm a toys r us kid i know i look like the 
to Jeffrey the giraffe. Oh my god, or Jerome the giraffe. I'm like any of the giraffes. Any, any giraffe, giraffe will know. do. Any giraffe will do. I'm trying to remember what his wife's name was. Because remember they had Jeffrey, Jeffrey and they had son, Jeffrey Jr. Jeffrey Jr. And I don't remember her name. Jerome and mm-hmm. I don't remember Jerome. I remember Jeffrey. I remember Jerome. Jerome was from the Friendly Giant. I'm talking about a different draft. Oh, here. I, th- I thought we were talking about I'm Toys saying R Us. draft, draft. Any draft will do. Right. Pick a draft from African Rusty Lions Party. Yeah. <laughs> Pick a draft in the wild. Pick a draft wherever you want. Pick a draft at Toronto Zoo. Pick a fucking draft. So I got these draft pants, so I don't know how often I'm going to wear them. I love them. They're so funny. I was laughing today because I was coloring a picture with the giraffe playing golf, and I was thinking about them. I'm just thinking about my pants. Yeah. This is hilarious. I haven't told you this lately. All thinking about like legal things lately and how like different legal things are going through and how the laws are changing. And I'm like reading things like every day about how things are changing and about like, vaccine passports and, and the mask mandates and things like that. And about people trying to like a lot of lawyers are getting a lot of business rights, right? Like a lot of business right now because a lot of people are losing their jobs and their livelihoods over vaccine passports and stuff. And there is a group called I read a recent legal dispute with a lawyer who had taken on a group of some dancers of the exotic variety mm. for safe workspace, safe twerk space. And tra- safe twerk space. <laughs> safe workspace, safe twerk space. Twerk I, is right. Twerk I, is right. I thought it was like a joke. It's not. <laughs> They're trying to skirt the mask rule. Okay, let me tell you. <laughs> is that a pun? <laughs> I guess it is if it's strippers. I guess it is because... So they're in like... Come on, brah. Help me skirt this. Come on, brah. Help me skirt this. They're going to try to skirt everything. But like, they're trying to skirt the mask roll. I don't know about you, but if I was a stripper, dude, like I'd be cosplaying the fucking shit out of this with the like Mortal Kombat style with the mask. Yeah, I would have been trying to do that before masks were like a thing. I know. like Because, you know, who knows what's crawling in there? What's going on under that mask? Well, I just like what life form is crawling in there, and, some of the and that you're going to encounter. There, That's what I mean. Like, like the, the guys that that uh, pay to see these ladies, they're not the nicest. Oh man, I don't know if they're going to want to wear their masks. It's like girls, I don't think you want to screw your masks just quite yeah. yet, ladies. Be safe. With the work you're doing is already pretty da- a dangerous career, just for your life. Be careful. Don't make it more dangerous for yourself. Stand up for your rights, absolutely. Like, if you have, if there's someone, you know, screwing with your rights, stand up for them. But I just thought, oh my God, I would just, I would cosplay the fuck out of that. You know what I mean? I love cosplay. Yeah. I love cosplay. And speaking of cosplay, you and I have a fucking hilarious, I mean, really cosplay ish story. It has to do with, like, we were talking today, you and I were talking about tribute bands versus like cover bands, right? Yeah. And we have like friends and, I mean, ourselves that have been in like both. Like tribute bands and cover bands. I have tons of bands that, like friends that do cover bands where they'll play a bar one night and they'll play like an 80s night. They'll play whatever bands. They'll play all requests. People will make requests. They'll play that band. They dress as themselves. Yeah, that's the big difference. A cover band will play any song that they haven't written. Exactly. Basically, well known songs by other bands, some sort of melange or group, like our good friend Glenn plays at the Poachers and he plays 90s, just 90s stuff. All 90s songs. And that's his repertoire, and he likes it. And then there's tribute bands. Tribute bands, whole different kettle of fish. Tribute bands is like a fucking crazy undertaking because there's like cosplay, there's costume involved, but oh, there's yeah. like, I'm talking like, you got to be into that character. If there's you are cosplay the this, and role play. Exactly. Or if you are the this person, you are the this person. If you are the Jesus, you are the Jesus. So Rob had a friend, or has a friend rather, who, who had played drums in a GNR tribute band. And they were actually a really fucking good band. Yeah. They performed live. They looked just like them. They sounded fucking huge just like them. They, they did a great job. Like they, they cosplayed like them. I almost did a documentary with them looking at the culture of tribute bands specifically. And there's been a couple out there. Is there? Yeah. And there were inter- the ones that were out there were interesting enough that I didn't want to pursue it anymore. Sure, sure. But what I was going to do with this GNR band, they wanted to recreate like GNR's like groundbreaking club tour through America. Yes. And it didn't pan out. But I thought that they, like you said, they were good enough to do it because of the attitude, the role playing and the costumes. Oh yeah. I mean, they played in this venue and you were like, 
mm, I hired a shooter. He's like a college guy. I'm like, well, oh. you know, I took, and I'm like, I took some photography and videography in like high school. And I kind of do that like on the side now just for like fun, but it's nothing really serious. So if you need a hand, just let me know. But you're like, you know, taking me out on a date. You're like, but I got to do this. You know, it's, I'm going to make some money and we'll do this and whatever. And so, he, you know what? I brought an extra camera. You want to help me out? I'm like, sure. You just punch in, you know, here, punch out here. It was really easy shots. So I started to get a little artsy. Buddy, old pal who showed up from the fan shop or wherever he came from. I don't know. He crawled out from under some fucking student rock. He did not rock. He was this timid little guy. And we got everything set up, and he fucking forgot to press the record button. Yeah. Don't forget that red button, now, motherfucker. I always try to think of these situations, like these bad situations that happen during production. How can you, you know, justify this kind of thing? Well, it wasn't a camera he was used to. It was, def- it was my camera, because I wanted all three cameras to be the same, to yes. match so it looked good. But... We had gone over and had we had shot some stuff already prior we to the show starting. We, around we in the shot, parking lot. Yeah, we shot some B-roll. We shot the signage in the marquee. Shot a little bit of like the street scene out there. So it's like things had gone well, like with the whole start and stop. It was like, what but happened? When you're, and we shot the whole show and they just wanted me to cut like three songs together through multi-camera and stuff like that. But one of the songs they wanted was the opening song because they wanted to see their entrance. And it was, their entrance was really, really good. Yeah. They and like so, of course, I started smoke. filming fucking everything because yeah. I was like, let's get a little fancy schmancy here. I know Rob didn't ask me to do this, but I'm like, whatever, I can do this. Yeah, your your angle saved the edit. Oh my Cause God, because there was nothing from his camera. When you don't have the first camera. two minutes of like, welcome to the jungle... That's like half the song. Yep. Let alone the intro, like with them walking on stage and addressing the crowd. And so like I have my angle, which is shooting multiple directions in order to cover stuff, thinking that I have his yeah, and yours. You have his. But thankfully you got creative and just made the whole thing like better. And I thought, OK, I, now that I can see what you shot, I had to like <laughs> re-edit it on the fly, knowing that I had your angle to go for rather than just being like a locked off tripod. You did some like excellent work there. Oh my god, that was that was a fun night though. That was it was fun. You and you did a great job, Same and you night. had the instincts that when somebody stepped in front of the camera, you kicked them out of the way and like punched past them. And oh yeah, I'm like know. get the fuck out of the way. We're doing something here. Like I mean, I am doing more things behind the camera lately and learning more things. And yes, you've been helping me lately with some action figure photography, which was a relief. A relief because you're well, like, because it's one less thing that I have to do. It's more production assisting and you know filming, production and stuff. design and special effects. And yeah, all lots that. of stuff. So it's huge help. It is a huge help, and it's fun for I'm me to get do. You, you get you trained on the gimbal next. And it's well, and it's nice to work with your partner. I love I working with you, and you know that, which is another reason why I love coming on your show. You love to work with a partner. And now, like speaking of partners, there's lots of COVID posts about I've seen posts about marriage. And there's lots of shit all over the interwebs about for and against COVID. Like tons of people, you know, believe it does exist, don't believe it exists. You know, some people believe in the vax, some people don't, whatever you believe, whatever. Mm. Do whatever the fuck you want at this point because everybody fucking is anyway. But I'd seen one post this week come up about marriage and I had brought it to, brought it to Rob's attention because we want to get like legally married uh, one of these days. But, uh, yeah, that'd be great. But uh, I said, you know, there was a post and it said that someone had mentioned that you have to have a vax pass to go get married, to get a marriage license. I know where this is going already. And you kind of looked at me and you went, is it beha- because you have to kiss? Yes. I question why you needed a vax pass to get married because you have to kiss somebody and they want to make sure that you're safe. And so, of course, I was like, I didn't say anything because I was like dying on the inside. But that makes sense. It it does make sense. But if you want, like you can take your own, you can take your own, you can take your own kiss and chance. Kiss it with a mask on. I don't care. But it's because you have to enter a government building and you didn't really realize that. But it was so cute. They're like, is it because you have to kiss? I'm like, I'm like, I mentioned marriage and all you can think about is kissing. Well, because that's like the big moment. That's the big buildup. Well, the. 
the, the wedding. climax of the, the ceremony. It's the climax. Ideally. Hopefully. But of that whole ceremony. And I, and I was thinking like a wedding outside, not like in a building. And it's like, well, you probably have to have a mask on because you're around the efficient. Yeah, efficient, definitely. Efficient yeah. or efficient? Efficient. The I don't priest, know what it is. Priest person? Minister, whatever you want to say. Whoever you're having <laughs> officiate you. Yes. Yeah. And I thought, well, you can't kiss with masks on unless you have a vax pass, maybe, so that it feels a little bit safer. Yeah, I thought, well, you probably can't get married unless you have a vax pass so you can kiss. That's just where I was. That's where my head was at. Catholic places. Well, I'm just, that's just who I am, okay? Oh, my God. I just like thinking about kissing you, maybe. I like kissing you. Marriage hacks. I got a parenting hack of the week for everybody to listen to this. The best parenting hack I learned this whole fucking week dress your kids in the color of their food when you are feeding those kids spaghetti motherfucking mom dad you better dress those kids in red it is red day i don't care if it's valentine's <laughs> day if it's red day of 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 craziness and and anger around your house it's the red day of happiness it's the red day of rudolph the red nosed reindeer make it red day if it's spaghetti day if they're having some like blueberry pie dress them in blue they're not, you know, if you, say, if you send them to school with, you know, soup in their thermos, don't send them in, like, with a white shirt. Like, they're going to come home atrocious. You're not going to be able to get that stain out. What kid wears white? Our kid wears white. I just make neutral colored food that day. I'm like, here you go. Here is a tuna. <laughs> Here's yogurt. Here's a vanilla yogurt. ice cream. And a tuna fish sandwich. <laughs> Some pickles for you. I said you should just dress your kids in tie-dye. Because no matter, you can ha plan any meal around a tie-dye shirt. Baby rainbow. That would work, and totally. Just, it just works. Just dress your kids in Grateful Dead apparel, like, completely, and they'll be fucking, they'll look awesome. They'll look great. Now, speaking of kids and, like, moms and everything in this week, Facebook is not something I do often. Facebook is it's something getting I brutal. do. It's fucking so divided and toxic and disgusting. <sighs> I don't do it often for a reason. So like I have my mommy pages and I have my diabetic juice box podcast pages and I keep in touch with the like, diabetes and diabetic community through that and JDRF and stuff. And I have my, like my uh, sad sick girls stuff that I do for people that have chronic pain and illness and stuff. But oh my God, the other day one of the moms posted that one of her kids who goes to school, like in-person school right now, a lot of the kids, and this is a this is a complaint that you and I have both heard from a lot of parents, is their kids are not having enough time to finish the food that's being provided for them because they're not getting enough time to eat in school. Yes. Right. So yeah, you pack a lunch, send it to school with your kid, but they don't have enough time to eat the lunch that you've packed. They have two nutrition breaks, two breaks, and they're still coming home with shit in their lunch. And then the teacher has the audacity to pick apart what's in the kids' lunch and calling them up every day and saying, oh, you're not part packing or anything healthy. She's got to eat the healthy stuff first. She wants to go for whatever it is that's not healthy first, but mom's packing things like cheese and crackers. The teacher's sending them back saying, oh, this isn't healthy. And these are like gluten-free crackers. It floors me. It floors me that the teachers have the gall and the authority to do that. And I understand why it's been implemented because some kids might not have the most health conscious parents. And it's like, sure. it's a gentle poke to make sure the kids are eating are right healthy. so that they can maybe be more receptive to education because what, sure, you, what you put better. in your body affects how you are. Yeah, that's what As they I took discovered out. recently, oh my God. They took out pop machines. And that's right. They did take out stuff like pop machines exactly. and vending machines. Oh and now they're putting God. tampon and maxi pad machines for free. I just heard. Oh, really? Yeah, it's going to be free mm. in the province of Ontario. They're going to make uh, I female. Can't, I can't wait to get a maxi feminine, pad. I, 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 I'm saying they're going to make feminine, feminine, feminine hygiene products. Hygiene, hygiene products. That's good. Free and accessible to young girls. I think that's important. It is important. It is. One good thing the government's doing. All the other other shits. Well, yeah. Fucking up on. When when did this happen? First of all, they're not. It's not called lunch anymore. It's nutritional, nutritional break. breaks. And Again, then, I've become that old crotchety man. Back in my day, we had lunch, motherfucker. Like, I had a lunch break what of forty five minutes. Did you do on your nutrition break? I fucking ate. Like, what the fuck do you think I did, teacher? And our son now eats like at eleven o'clock. It's fucking crazy. He has lunch at eleven o'clock, and he has a second nutrition break, which is like a bowl of like carb free soup, like chicken and broccoli, or like cream of broccoli, and then has like another like dinner by quarter to five, five. 
Yeah. Our so kids are I don't like, like the terminology and how it's changed, but the teacher policing the food. Oh my God. The teacher says to the kid, oh no. One of the moms pipes up and I said, like I piped up and I said, she goes, well, what would you do in this situation? Everyone's like, oh, a gentle talk with a teacher would be nice. I'm like, this is where I don't get along with you moms. I'm like, my kid's diabetic. I wouldn't be having a gentle talk with the teacher. I'd be fucking like going into the school and educating well, everybody. What did the teacher say? On how, well, the teacher didn't say anything to this woman. So the teacher says to the, another woman who had a similar experience, she told her daughter that they had to eat something in their lunch that was from God's garden before they had anything else in their lunch. And I will tell you this right now, whatever religion you are, I don't care. But if you bring religion into my kid's life without my say so, and they're not going to like a Catholic school or a school that enforces and indoctrinates religion, you bet you're going to be sleeping in God's garden. Six feet under. Pushing yeah. up carrots, motherfucker. There, there's just a weird connotation there too. It's like you got to eat like this kind of. It's, it's almost like a threat. It's like God made this for you. No, it's like eat you got to eat something from this or what? Or the snake's gonna come. Well, that's what I was thinking. First, as soon as you said, I'm like, well, I would have had the apple because that's what the snake told me to do. Oh God! But... If you told the teacher that they'd shit themselves, but I don't know if half these kids are in I Catholic just... school. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I hundred percent agree. I don't like the whole policing. I think that's how you're going to develop eating disorders when it you're, is. When you're I telling think kids what to eat, when to eat, thing. how to eat. Like our kids eat very healthy. They don't stop. They don't stop eating. That's another thing. It's, it's amazing. But it's like they eat very healthy. When I yeah. see the things that like a lot of people are like, oh, my kids got to eat this at school today. I'm like, these teachers need to like let them be and just eat what they want to eat. And because like, if that was my kid. I'm like, yo, he's diabetic. He's going to eat whatever the fuck he wants. And you're going to back the fuck up. Yeah. Before you get told the fuck up, to back the fuck up by the fucking CCAC nurse. Because she's going to tell you to fuck off too. Yeah. And then the diabetic DBs nurse is going to come in here. Tell you, and she's probably going to tell you to fuck off too. I just feel like it steps over the line. It's the whole way school over the line. system is... Is a mess It's just right wild. Now. It's, it's just fucking It's just mess. wild. Which is, you know, I haven't... I'm just I'm just excited to kind of learn more about it. Yeah, me too. Me too. I am getting more creative with Instacart this week. I got the kids Halloween costumes on Instacart this week. I can't believe what Instacart has become from when we first discovered it. It was groceries. Out of necessity. And now it's just, now it's almost like a game. Like, what else can we find? It's like the ultimate, like, digital scavenger hunt. It's like an RPG and you watch a shopper in fucking real time. I and they wish they had XP and, like, level up. And, like, even if it just unlocked a new icon for you, the way that Waze does when, we are, when we're on our yeah, road trips. Yeah, when we're traveling. The more yeah. miles we get, the more icons we can unlock i miss you traveling we'll get there baby i know but the kids halloween costumes it was amazing very special it was it was very very good scarlet is going to be back girl mm -hmm. and our is eldest cool. is going to be like a like a wraith or something like it's like that. a wraith and with glowing eyes and like a like a cape yeah and he wanted to have like a weapon or like a side but we we're like you can't do the weapons thing buddy like school doesn't allow weapons yeah. he's in distance education and just looked a little violent so we we're just like could you do this with the with the power foam sword and he's like oh yeah i could do that so he was agreeable we were agreeable everything's cool everybody got what they wanted but yeah, i think he likes the eyes blink yeah and they light up so oh uh, some money later so instacart but they're now insta petting they're I saw having Insta pets. Like, you'd have a hamster delivered to your house. Like, the whole setup. It's so weird. It's kind of dangerous. You said our eldest wanted chickens. And I'm like, well, how do we get chickens? Do we drive out to farm? You're like, oh, no, they just mail them to you. I'm like, what? You're like, yeah, they just put chickens in the mail. No, they put a permit in the mail for you. And then they come and they set up chickens in your fucking backyard. Oh, I completely misunderstood that. I thought like there was going to be a box with holes in it. Like it gets bumped around by Canada Post. Oh, Christ. And I'm like, no. how is that legal? No, what they do is they come and they zone you for chickens. They help you get a, a per property permit. Well, that makes way more a sense. Permit to have chickens in the city. They set up the coop so you don't have to do any of that stuff because they're farmers and they have chicken experience. <laughs> is this how I missed my chicken boat? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I can get behind ordering chickens knowing that they're just going to be like, they're just the mail. Laying, like, they're just like, would you like lick a stamp to the forehead of a chicken and like just pop it in the box? Ask Gonzo, okay? Ask Gonzo the great. Ask him, no. So maybe next year I'm going to get my laying chickens. 
Because they're just for laying. Like well, I we have the space now. Exactly. So I wouldn't, I mean, I would never eat a chicken. I, I mean, I don't eat the eggs either, but I mean, like the, for the kids and you, it'd be great. Because we eat a lot, like you guys eat, consume a good amount of eggs. I make a lot of omelets and egg things. I don't know why. I, I keep forgetting the secret trick, and that's a little bit extra butter. Because mm -hmm. I love eggs over easy. I know, you love them perfect. You love my eggs. <laughs> yeah, you cook them like bang on like every time. It's just a lot of experience. Like it's like the experience you have with like video games, for instance. And speaking of Halloween costumes. You want to talk video games? Let's what about Halloween games. video games? What Some you... good ones out there. Well, I you know my favorite Halloween themed kind of horror video game is. Uh, I'm going to say Ghouls and Ghosts, what I call it, well, Ghosts and Goblins was what it was on NES, and then it was Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Yeah, Super NES had you. it. I, like, uh, the version that I played the most was Super Ghouls and Ghosts, which was right. like Ghosts and Goblins or whatever, with Arthur and all his different suits and all it's his different so powers. hard. It is such an impossible game. I've beat it. What I want you to play, just to see how frustrated you get, is the Genesis version. Oh, fuck me. Because you don't get the double jump. What? Yeah. <laughs> you don't get the double jump in the no. Genesis version? Yeah, oh, that's right. Fuck the Genesis. You know what? This is something we're going to have to discuss at a later time. Yeah. It's, I don't like that. It's it's a tough one. And I recently, I bought you the Castlevania Advance collection. collection. Yes, so I know. So all the Game Boy Advance games, which are all 16-bit games mm -hmm. that look like Super Nintendo ones. I bought you, I think there's four new Castlevania games for you to play now. There are four new ones. And they, I love that kind of that style, too. I love that the, the way it looks. I mean, Splatterhouse is a good, another horror film, like a horror-themed game. He looks kind of like Jason a little bit. Yeah, totally. And the there's Jason. a there's a bunch of like uh, homages to different like horror icons within that. One game that I haven't played that got rave reviews and even had an expansion pack is Alien Isolation. Really? It's from the Alien franchise. It's on PlayStation. It's first person perspective. And Creepy. you're like on the ship. Ooh. And there's a xenomorph out there. And the more sound you make, the more you attract it to you. Boo! Freaky no. And it's like dark. Okay. And like like eerie like the ship yeah so that's that's something the harrison's not quite our eldest isn't quite ready for it yet but when he is in a few years i Give think it'll years. be something that he'll be into he loves xenomorphs and like animation because yeah. he's been loving doing like photography with you and doing action figure photography and filming and even like like before bed tonight he was like mom like, yeah, he's like, do you think that uh, Daddy will want to do action figure photography with me tomorrow and like do some videography so I can practice my camera work and skills? Because like on the weekend, he likes it when they're not playing outside because it's supposed to pour tomorrow. Ugh. He wants to like bake cookies with me and like of course like do turkey stuff. And he's like, what are you gonna eat, Mom? I'm like, don't worry, I have some turkeyless turkey cutlets. Well, don't Mummy will Mummy will have turkey dinner. It's all good, right? But he's just like, uh, do you think Dad will want to do some uh, some uh, filming with me? And then Scarlett can do the effects. I'm like, amazing. So we have the brother and sister team going here. Dad's got everything. We're helping with setups. Harrison's setting up action figures. Getting new action figures is like he's getting paid, getting paid to do all this getting work. Getting paid in toys. Oh, big time. He loves it, too. It's fun. He, he really appreciates the process. He understands the lighting, the positioning, the design, and like the atmosphere and the environments we put the figures in. And he and yeah, he was shocked when I let him use like one of my cameras mm -hmm. to film. Like he's been shooting with his camera, and he loves his camera that you gave him. But he's got the comprehension for it, and I didn't yes, want does. him to learn on a Very shit smart. camera because like that's the worst thing you can do to a kid. Is they have this like big dream, and you want to nurture it and everything, and then you give them like the plastic two dollar made at the dollar store version of what they want, and then they get it, and they're like, oh, I just I don't want to do this because it makes yeah. it either an obstacle for them. Or it makes it makes it such of a such a challenge for him, them that it makes it unachievable. They don't have that grit. They don't want to keep going, right? I don't want him to be held back because the tool isn't working for his level of comprehension. Exactly. Like he's so far ahead. I like you know I, I can't do anything about the fact that he's advanced. Yeah. All I can do is nurture it and make him, you know, more advanced and support it. You know. I'm not gonna give. You know, somebody that wants to learn guitar, a guitar with three strings. No. Right. Sure, you can make guitar. music on it, but you got to play guitar 
the well, like proper. They got to play a proper guitar. That is the difference between like authoritative parenting, where you're, you know, kind of like what we do, where we we have talks about things. We don't have like blow up episodes, you know, where we're losing our shit on our kids or. They're saying, hey, you want to play this musical instrument? Like, no, you're not playing that musical instrument because I didn't play that when I was growing up. That's like an authoritarian parent. Okay. You're thinking about these like two parenting styles. And even with him, he was like, well, I want to do, I really want to do photography. So we sat down and we like talked about it for a while. Like we both did with him. Are you sure this is something you want to do? Yeah. And I can see why some people would be hands off. Like, so like you've got instruments, I've mm -hmm. got camera gear and they've in, and our eldest in this case had expressed interest in both. And it's not like we've ever said, don't touch that instrument or don't no. touch that camera. Like, Go ahead, pick it up. It's like, what do you want to do? How do you want to learn? And we did get them, uh, you know, a more affordable camera Just to for, for Christmas. Just to wet and like chops. he took to it and like played with it for like hours every day for weeks like i've got like 500 videos and thousands of images he's taken with it yep and it's like okay where's the question about his desire or passion to to learn the skill and it's take like, it to the next how level? do we know that he's There's serious he's like, serious yeah he he's he's really pushed like what he's capable of well it's like an authoritarian parent would be like nope because i don't i i don't think that's right you're not doing that you're you're young you're too young to do that I mean, like, why don't yeah. you have a discussion with the child, nurture their dreams, find out kind of, that's when the child and the parents kind of come up with something together. Oh, that's my favorite thing. It's my favorite thing when our kids get into something and when you're into stuff, because when I know like all of you guys are like what you're passionate about, it's so fun to be a part of that and support it and nurture it and watch you guys go with it. It's nice to do as a family too, to like do any individual in the family. It's nice to support your 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 little people, your little your village. It's just cool to see people. the sparks going. When, There's with always both of our sparks kids. going. There's always got sparks going. You need to do a very special reading of a story sometime today. Not on my podcast or anything, but it was a very special girl's birthday today, and she was very disappointed that you didn't send her like a cameo for her birthday of you reading. One of my cameo. one of my girlfriends loves. To hear my husband talk. She just loves it. And it was her birthday today. Yeah, and I heard she took offense that I just said happy birthday. Because it ain't face. good enough. She thought she needed Well, I got to home... tell you, when this happened, this was during the, the bowel apocalypse with our daughter this morning. I know. So it was, was like... Was bowel shit apocalypse. I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm lucky I'm awake and coherent enough to say happy birthday. Well, you're going to be saying it with your mouth later. You be putting Whoa. on a cameo story. I want that you, got intense. I want you to paint her like one of your French girls. Uh, really? Kind of. I found your wedding toppers the other day. Ah, and then more games, more games, more game playing, me being silly. Today we were talking about technology. Because you had gone and gotten some records. Some yeah. old records. 45s. From the garage at your grandpa's house, he's just like, "I'm gonna leave the garage open for you. Yep. I left a bunch of your stuff out there for you. you can get come your get crap it. out of the house. Get your crap out of this house." I'm like what? Twenty-two years is too later, long since just, I moved out. It's been sitting there. Twenty-two years later, after the fact, come get your shit. Where are you? I'm not home. I left it in the garage. I'm okay. Punching the code. Garage goes up. I leave. That's a lot of crap. Well, I make some bread. I'm like, leave it on his back porch, but put yeah. it inside to make sure he's, you know, hmm. just stick it inside the door or something like that to make sure he doesn't, no one steals it on him. No one would like it ever. We want to make him some nice fresh bread for grandpa. And then you got to get your stuff, obviously. So you brought home all your mom's like 45s, which most of them we are giving to like a good friend of ours who owns a jewelry company. And they'll fit, like, they'll really fit with her, some of her flat lays and her photos and the colors that she wanted. Mm -hmm. But then... You'd found so many treasures, but we talked about like, like this brought up technology with us. Going Physical from, like, media, yeah. Yeah, like 45s to going to full LPs, like in the records and the wax from wax going to vinyl. Yeah, I was like, okay. why are these 45s heavier than normal? You're like, well, that's because when they made them out of wax, I'm like, wow. I thought there was just like a lot of music on it. <laughs> no, it's just it's like so many <laughs> songs. Why only two? But then I mean, we went to cassettes and eight tracks with laser discs. And CDs, then like, VHS tapes, DVDs, Blu-rays. 
floppy disks, zip drives. The floppy disk, the five and a quarter, the big ones. The big ones, And then yep. the three and a half Three and a half size. inch little guys yeah. that'll stick in this. Scuzzy drives. Nintendo power gloves. Dat tapes. I know so much about technology, obviously. It's just crazy because I was thinking we've seen so many evolutions and changes in physical media formats. So just looking at music, you know, vinyl, eight track cassettes, oh CDs, God. now digital. Now it's like everywhere. It's just like Spotify, Apple like music. Our kids, like they don't understand when they look at a CD or a DVD that that's what housed music or a movie. That's what's in it. They're just like, Alexa, play Shake It Off by Taylor Swift. By T-Swizzle. Play T-Swizzle. I'm like, Alexa, go the fuck to sleep. They just think it's just this, this magical box that has all this stuff in it. Alexa, turn the channel on the TV. Alexa, do this. Alexa, I want a poutine. Alexa, like, seriously. Instacart, bring me a gerbil. Like, literally, what did Scarlett ask for Instacart to bring her? Like, it, she said, she asked me to bring her something from Instacart that was, like, absolutely, like, out of this world. Like, I'm like, sorry, Instacart can't go to the moon and get this for you. She's like, ask the shopper. I'm like. Yeah. All right, Karen, it's go just, to bed. Just, that's just the world that we live in now that, like, our kids just... KJ. It's crazy. I that, know. And, like, I feel like my folks must have felt, like, with, like, the internet coming of age. Yeah, they've been like, oh, those kids, this is crazy. This multiplayer is... online gaming and, and stuff like that. talking to each other all over the world. Yeah, yeah totally. And, and then texting this... and cell phones and... Because it was all brand new for them. Exactly. And they'd be like, oh, what's crazy? And, like, what, what's going to happen in the next 20 years? I don't want to know. I'm going to find out. Oh, you know what's going to happen in the next 20 minutes or so? I want to know what's in that little drawer in the cassettes that you brought home. Because you brought home some cassettes from your folks' place. And I want to know what some of your mixes are. Yeah, so I have a, a cassette organizer. Oh. It's like wood grain. You know, it has three oops. sleeves. Oops. I'm so excited for this. Uh, we haven't unboxed this or opened this yet. I just dusted it off so it didn't look like too dusty Springfield here. Um, I'm going to read me what you got. Open your drawers. Oh, I saw some tapes. So, they all seem to be on, on the one side. Okay, what do we got here? Now, I, I don't know. These aren't, they're not all my tapes. I, I don't know where my other cassettes are. They're probably out in the garage still. Probably in the garage. First one is the Batman motion picture soundtrack. The original? From 89, yeah. Nice. Prince. Did Prince it all. somebody. Yes. Um, Bat Dance. Yep. That's a good soundtrack. That's a great soundtrack. I can't believe I have that. I listen to that a lot. Oh, yes. <laughs> what's, what's this, what is this jam <laughs> of yours? <laughs> MC Hammer, Please Hammer, Don't Hurt Him. Please em. Hammer, Don't Hurt Him. How did I know that you would have him? Oh, my goodness. Please Macaloo, Don't Hurt Him. Oh, my God. Here comes the hammer. Oh, my God. He's coming. God. He's coming for you. And then I got some weird, I think this is like a, a gas station, Rock While You Roll. It has like the Almond Brothers and Ned's Atomic Dustbin. And... Oh, it's like totally one of those compilations that yeah. you get like from Petro Canada. And then I have Maestro Fresh West, The Black Tie Affair, which of course has um, Let Your Backbone Slide on it. I'm I was going to Let Your Backbone Slide is definitely on that. I think so. Uh, it's actually not. What? No, this may have been like the follow up. Well, that's probably on one of your like sweet like mixtapes that I bet you got. Cool. On. I I don't remember buying this, so I may have borrowed this from a friend. Now your friend is somewhere not your friend anymore because you have their Maestro Fresh West tape. Oh. What's goodness. this? So this is this is a. This is embarrassing, isn't it? <laughs> no, not at all. This is a mixtape for sure. On side A, we have I like to move it. Mm. Shoop. In the former, jump around and gonna make you sweat. This is even sexier than the Macarena. On the B side, it's. Uh, B side. I can't read some of this stuff. I got Whoop, there it is. Tribal Dance, No Limits. Uh, Who's the Man? I think it's House of Pain. Who's the man with the master plan? Yeah, it is. I think like this. The Insane side, in the membrane, and I want to get high. Side A was like for you to like try to like get it on, and side B was for like for you to bask in the afterglow. Oh God! Totally. This okay. This is. Oh God. This is side A is rap. Side B is dance. This is another great rap compilation. and dance. What is with you? So here? side A is uh, Friday Ice Cube. Um, keep their heads ringing. Roll it up. Light it up. Super Hose, Natural Born Killers, 21 Jump Street, East Side, West Side, Murder Was the Case, 
smoke it up, toke it up. You what? better recognize. You better recognize. The burger song and I wish. A skilo? And then side B is. Oh, Jesus. I wish skilo. Yeah. And then Mortal Kombat theme song. <laughs> Saturday night, Wigfield. The Macarena. Of course, because you had to have your sexual... Like, it's like the fourth song, so it's like just amping up. You're up. like, I'm getting okay, into my anyways, mating call right now. And something called Get Away. I don't know what that was, though. Tootsie Roll. Get Ready for This. Do the dance. Remember Get Ready for This? I remember Get Ready for This. Get Ready for This. Y'all ready for this? La, 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 hey, hey. La, 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 hey, hey. Your face what? right now. You don't remember that song? No. Oh, wow. I didn't get into that kind of... Uh, and then we have like three more making a good comeback. No Limits, Shoop, and Informer. <laughs> because, you know, we love to shoop, shooby dooby, like scooby dooby. I do. I like what you do. What you got? Oh, man. Oh, what else is in there? Uh, this just is like Dance Mix 93, 94, 95. I had all the dance mixes. I will say that. I got Michael Jackson Thriller. Thriller. I love that. That's a great album. Uh, this is a mixtape. Part of it uh, is uh, Side A. Fergie did it for me by the looks of it. Oh, it has Presidents Fergie. of the USA. It has Lump, Feather Plucking, Kitty and Peaches. We're not going to make it. Naked and Famous. And then Silver Chair, Suicidal Dream. And some Foo Fighters. And he says, Rob, this next song is especially for you. Hope you like it. And it's uh, Mr. Mustache remix, which is a Nirvana track. Yeah. Oh my God. I always loved Suicidal Dream by Silverchair. And I love that song. Side B is Grave Diggers. Oh my God. Yeah. And it's just all the different, like, one Thanks, Uncle suicide. Ray, for that tape. No, no, side B was what I did, so I added stuff on side oh, B. Oh, it wasn't Uncle Ray that put Grave Diggers yeah. on there. That was a good. Album, I like Grave Diggers a lot. It was. It looks like there, you know, there were two wolves that were fighting factory. inside of you, and one wanted to rock, but the other one just wanted to fucking dance. But now I'm curious about where my other tapes are. Like I had User Illusion Two and Hysteria. They're in Grandpa's garage. Just tell him to leave the garage open. Yeah. Grab your cassettes. I didn't have a lot of cassettes though. I made a lot of mixtapes. A Did lot you? Me of mixtapes. I had a lot of cassettes though. And, well. and I would buy CDs just to make mixtapes. Would you? Yeah. Yeah, that's the bomb. And it wasn't until like five or six years later that burners came out that you can make mixed CDs. And goddamn like Napster and all those kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah. All those things. So, I mean, it's going to be a long weekend. I'm unfortunately on my back. My back has not flared up in quite a while. Something that is going on with my back that does not help is I don't talk about this a lot, but I have, I mean, I don't even talk about this to you a lot. I'll, years and years ago, after being in a really bad car accident, I got hit by a transport truck and like crushed. And subsequently years after that, because I'd have pain, 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 since I was like in my early 20s, I guess getting transport truck smucked will do that to you. And uh, they diagnosed me finally after years with something called fibromyalgia, which is basically, you can Google it. It's a chronic, I mean, Google it from like Mayo Clinic or something. It's a chronic widespread pain condition that you can get all over your body. It usually doesn't really flare up too much, too bad for me, unless I'm under like an immense amount of stress or I do something specifically. But I had a bad, bad, bad back injury from that car accident. And once every blue moon, and I hadn't hurt my back real bad, since I was like before I was pregnant with my first baby and he's almost seven so it's been a while since I've had a real bad like back slip and I'm telling you it fucking hurts it's not a fucking joke this sucks balls so mm. much like and with the fibromyalgia and when I got diagnosed with it I was so young it was like a wastebasket term that the doctors were like pulling out of the wastebasket because they didn't know what else to do with me yeah. So I'd had MRIs and I'd had all kinds of things. And so finally they saw I had all this like damage to the soft tissue in my back and everything. And they said that we're going to test you and press on all these different parts of your body. And I didn't know how many points they're going to do. Apparently there's 18 points on your body they can do. Well, I tested positive and lit up like a fucking Christmas tree for all the points. They like touch you on a part of your body and right beside it feels fine. But then they move over like a millimeter and it feels like something bruised you. 
It's horrid. So they're called tender points. And they measure that like with electrodes and stuff? Or how, no, how they, they, well, they, did, they did some... Or do they uh, just say Yelp if it hurts? Basically. And then they mm. did some other stuff with me where they stuck electrodes in my legs to see how well the neurons were firing and things sure. like that. So different things to... I mean, they put me on painkillers. I mean, thank God I haven't had painkillers in like years. The closest thing I will take now is like I'll take a Robaxis set, which is pretty like hardcore, like even for me. It makes me feel kind of fucked up. So with fibromyalgia, yeah, is it like your body is an eggshell and now it's cracked and it's forever cracked because yep, you can't ever put it together again. It it still holds its form and shape, but it's you're always going to have those cracks those that are going to rub. Fault line cracks. Yeah. And eventually some yolk's going to like come out the sides once in a while. Because I don't know anything about it. Like you said, you don't talk to me about it. I, I don't know why you don't talk about it more. It, it sounds like a, a pretty It's a part of my life that I like to kind of like thing. shoot under the rug a lot. Because I try to like, I went to a lot of mindfulness things about it. I went to a lot of psychology based sort of groups about it. And changing your mindset about how you deal with chronic pain. And how I knew I was going to kind of be in for it for the rest of my life and it wasn't a death sentence realizing it's just a life sentence and modifying my life in ways that I can to you know curb that but like at the height of me having fibromyalgia and being all these different things because the doctors they didn't know what to do at first with me they had me on a ton of medication and at that time I ballooned up like you wouldn't believe I was up to like 204 pounds now like I weighed myself I think like yesterday I was like a buck 25 so imagine me like 75 pounds bigger like that I would be a large on on like my I don't have a very big frame right like yes I'm a short lady you're tight and tiny I am tight and tiny so imagine me at 204 pounds so the person that I was with at the time thought it would be funny to sweep me up in their arms and sing me a song so I got swept up in their arms. I don't know how they picked me up because I was fucking heavy. Like 204 pounds. That's a that's a whole lot of woman. I got baby beluga. Unbelievable. Baby. I'm like. And I'm guessing that you weren't like super like pleased with your shape. No, because it was pretty much I was a ball with a pumpkin with like tits. So that didn't help. What's up, pumpkin so, tits? So I'm just up here getting rocked <laughs> rock like baby jack-o'-lantern back and forth. And so finally I say to this person, I'm like, do you know what a baby beluga is? I'm like, it's a baby. I'm like, a baby what? They don't fucking know because they, they don't fucking know at all. I'm like, it's a baby whale, you fucking asshole. Blah, blah, blah. And he was just like, I'm sorry. Like, also knew like, he was fucking mortified because he like, also knew I'm a total douchebag. So, I mean... Yeah, you really like to, like, stick it to people when uh, they cross a line for you. Like, you want to make sure that they don't forget that they've crossed that I line. I just want them to know and educate them so they don't do it to anyone else. So don't call me a baby beluga when, like... So if you're going to call, like, someone who's exceptionally large a whale, like, that's probably not a good idea. So I'm going to let you know that that's wrong. Don't ever do it again. Don't ever do it again. That's not cool. You'll be sleeping in God's garden, motherfucker. <laughs> my God. Oh, my God. Well, I want to thank you for, for coming on my show. Well, thank you for having me. I, I love talking to you. And I love uh, the privilege of talking to you on your platform. Privilege. Well, there'll be more, it is a privilege. There'll be lots more platforms coming down the pipe. I'll be telling you. I'm, this is how I'm teasing you about Patreon. I'm so curious to see what you want to do with Patreon. Oh. I know uh, we you see each other. You know a couple of the tiers. I, I know some things that you're thinking about, mm -hmm. but it, until it's like up there, I don't know what's going to be what set are the in stone. Final reward tiers when are? I plan stuff, I think I have great ideas, and then I realize that I don't like what I've done, and I change my shit all the time. Oh, I know, totally. But I'm, ju I'm be... just excited. I love that I get to have like a front row seat for what you do, and every now and then I get pulled into a little bit of what you're doing like this. But at the same time, I can just step back and appreciate everything that you're doing all by yourself, and I love that. I think you're going to be surprised at some of the reward tiers pleasantly, pleasantly about some of the... I hope we get to do some video work. I hope that I can do like, I would love, can I pitch you an idea? What? I would love for once a month, if we can figure out a way to make it work, where we shoot like a music video of sorts. Whether it's a cover or whether it's an original or, but just like something that's, that's fun. 
Okay, well, it doesn't mean it has to be silly. You can let us know your thoughts. That's a good idea. You can let us know your thoughts. You want a music video? You want an original? You want a cover? We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see, what the, we'll see what the people decide. Now, the people, what I've decided is they have no idea on social media where the fuck to find you. You never drop any of your socials. So well, I mean, I, I don't want to plug myself on your show. Well, plug away. Where are they going to find you on social media if they go looking for you, Robin Callum? I think the best place to find me is probably Twitter. That's probably yeah. the easiest place to get a hold of me, at Rob McZob. Or you can just go to my website, too, robmczob.com. You can find all the different movies and stuff that I've done. But Twitter's the easiest way. Get at me there or Rob McCallum Films on Instagram if IG is more your thing. You got to get into more of the Instagram. I'm a slave to the gram. I love it. You are a gram slave. Everyone knows where you can find me. You can find me on Instagram at 21st Century Rocker Mom. You can find me at the same handle at 21st Century Rocker Mom on TikTok. Just, you know, being a dick talk. And you can find me on my YouTube channel a lot more at Tandy Candler channel. <laughs> Next week, we're going to be live probably again at 9 or 9.30 around the same time. Probably another Saturday night and I ain't got no money. So fucking subscribe and I will. Because once I hit a thousand subscribers, I'll have some money. Yeah. It won't be much and I won't get paid probably for like another five years. But it's all passive income. You can find me at Twitter. At Tandy Candler. I'll probably be bitching at some political asshole. Getting blocked. Getting blocked. Getting blocked by Maxime Bernier. My crowning glory of my life. And otherwise you can find me on all your favorite streaming platforms. You've got Deezer and Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And anywhere you want to find me. I'm there. I'm there for you. So I'll see y'all beautiful people. I'll see you next week. I hope you have a wonderful kind of creepy... Halloween week, I'm going to go watch some scary-ass movies. Have some crispy tofu with my best bud here. Hmm. What That's do you think? Of you. Oh. I love you. That's what I think. I think so, too. Let's go get freaked out.